Well, E. Jean Carroll has sent Donald Trump on his way to bankruptcy with the $90 million that he now owes E. Jean Carroll as of tonight. That's $83.3 million in a, a jury return for E. Jean Carroll on Friday, added to the $5.6 million that a jury returned for E. Jean Carroll in the same courtroom last year and with interest running on both of those judgments. Interest. Remember the interest that everyone else has forgotten about. Donald Trump is already around $90 million in debt to E. Jean Carroll. And that debt increases every single day that it is not paid because of the interest added by law to that amount every day that it remains unpaid. And that could be the smallest debt that Donald Trump owes after a New York judge enters a judgment in a civil fraud case against Donald Trump in which the New York State Attorney General is sinking $370 million. And that's not all. Don't stop there. There are much bigger possible judgments coming. Washington, D.C. juries could make that New York number look small if they return verdicts against Donald Trump in the civil cases brought against him by 11 members of the House of Representatives. That's 11 plaintiffs who are suing Donald Trump for, in effect, threatening their lives on January 6th by sending his mob to the Capitol. There are also three police officers who are suing Donald Trump for the threats and injuries that they suffered on January 6th. Each one of those plaintiff's cases, each one of them, could be getting hundreds of millions of dollars in the same Washington, D.C. courthouse where a civil jury returned a verdict of $148 million against Rudolph Giuliani for the defamation of two Georgia election workers, Ruby Freeman and her daughter, Shea Moss. Donald Trump could be facing court orders to pay a billion dollars or more in the next few years. And those Washington, D.C. jurors are going to get to hear Donald Trump saying in depositions that he's worth $10 billion. Those juries are going to hear statements from Donald Trump saying he's worth much more money than anything his accounting, accounting of his assets shows. And so the $90 million or $100 million, depending on exactly when she collects it, that E. Jean Carroll is now on her way to collecting from Donald Trump, could just be the beginning of Donald Trump's collapse into bankruptcy because of all of the willful and stupid ways Donald Trump has broken the law. The law that E. Jean Carroll used to crush Donald Trump in court and humiliate him to the point where he stalked out of the courtroom during final arguments is the oldest law that Donald Trump has found himself subject to. Before there was a United States of America, defamation was against the law in this part of the world. To the Puritan settlers of the Massachusetts Bay Colony, nothing mattered more to them than their reputations, nothing. And so defamation was a frequently used tort in colonies like Massachusetts more than 100 years before the Constitution of the United States existed. That period is recalled in Nathaniel Hawthorne's 19th century novel, The Scarlet Letter, set in 1642, which tells the story of the agonies suffered by a woman who lost her reputation. There were worse fates in those days than having to wear a red letter A marking you as an adulterer. Reputation was a matter of life and death for the people, men and women, but mostly women, who were accused of witchcraft. In 1692, in Massachusetts, 20 women and men were put to death after being convicted as witches. Each one of those accused witches was defamed, defamed in the worst possible way with the worst possible end to this Day, the term witch hunt means an investigation based on nothing, and it is criminal and civil defendant Donald Trump's favorite term to describe what is happening to him. He used it on Friday after the jury quickly returned their $83.3 million verdict against Donald Trump in the E. Jean Carroll case. I will now read to you for the first time ever a Donald Trump post on his social media network in full. And I am reading it in full because of the words that do not appear 
In this post, at 4.55 p.m. on Friday, Donald Trump wrote, absolutely ridiculous, I fully disagree with both verdicts and will be appealing this whole Biden-directed witch hunt focused on me and the Republican Party. Our legal system is out of control and being used as a political weapon. They have taken away all First Amendment rights. This is not America, exclamation point. That is the ranting of Donald Trump cowering in fear now of the best lawyer he has ever seen in a courtroom, Roberta Kaplan. That is Donald Trump cowering in fear of E. Jean Carroll because that post does not contain the name E. Jean Carroll. Donald Trump has dared not speak her name since Roberta Kaplan convinced a jury to shut him up with an $83 million verdict. In her final argument to the jury on Friday, Roberta Kaplan said, it will take an unusually high punitive damages award to have any hope of stopping Donald Trump, to have any chance of allowing Ms. Carroll's life to return to normal. After a very short deliberation, the jury returned $65 million in punitive damages. In Donald Trump's defense, he relentlessly, his relentlessly incompetent defense lawyer, Alina Haba, tried to claim a First Amendment right for Donald Trump to say whatever he wants about E. Jean Carroll. She told the jury, ladies and gentlemen, in our country, you have the right to speak. You have a constitutional right to speak. Ms. Kaplan, objection, Your Honor. The judge sustained. You have a constitutional right to some kinds of speech and not others. Donald Trump grandly stalked out of the courtroom a few minutes into Roberta Kaplan's argument to the jury. The judge stopped Attorney Kaplan for a moment just to note the record will reflect that Mr. Trump just rose and walked out of the courtroom. After the Trump defense lawyer made her argument to the jury, Roberta Kaplan's co-counsel, Sean Crowley, rose to speak. There has been some speculation about how the jury might have reacted to Donald Trump stalking out of the courtroom during Roberta Kaplan's final argument. There is every reason to believe that Sean Crowley's brilliant final argument turned that stunt into more money in the verdict returned against Donald Trump. Sean Crowley ended her argument this way. The defense wants you to decide that the only way Ms. Carroll could have avoided the bad things that have happened to her is by staying silent. Meanwhile, the man who did these things to her, the man who sexually assaulted her, he gets to do whatever he wants. According to the defense, he gets to lie, he gets to threaten, he gets to ignore a jury verdict. Objection, the judge overruled Ms. Crowley. He gets to defy the law and the rules of this courtroom. You saw how he has behaved through this trial. You heard him. You saw him stand up and walk out of the courtroom while Ms. Kaplan was speaking. Rules don't apply to Donald Trump. He gets to do whatever he wants and use his massive, powerful platform to keep ruining her life. He even believes he gets to testify under oath and lie once again. Objection overruled. Ladies and gentlemen, this isn't a campaign rally. It's not a press event. This is a court of law, and it's Ms. Carroll's life. Donald Trump sexually assaulted her. He defamed her. He keeps defaming her. He is not the victim. This is her life. Help her take it back. Make him stop. Make him pay enough so that he will stop. Thank you. The winning team discussed the, ta the case with Rachel tonight. If your lawyers told you that there was another case and that you should go back and get more money out of him and sue him again, would you do it? Absolutely. Absolutely. I am more than willing to do it again because we achieved so much in a seven-day trial. We did what people thought was impossible. We beat Donald Trump.